Now this I'm going to tell you about um, two projects in the community I did. So as happens, the phone rang one day in the studio, and you, you know, pre-email a little bit. Hello, and it was David Brown, the direct, the senior curator at the South Eastern Center for Contemporary Arts in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And they have a tradition there of inviting artists to be in resident w and work with the community. And before me, it had been Fred Wilson and uh, Maya Lin. So I was very honored to be invited, and I just said yes. I said, great, yes, let's do it. I hung up, I, had to, I thought, what is an artist in the community? And I, and I re wondered, what, what, what am I going to do? So I thought about it, and I realized that <coughs> I, had a, I had a secret. I had a secret from my childhood that I had never, ever, ever told anyone. And I thought, hmm, maybe I should do this out of town <coughs> in the South. <laughs> so what this was, and I'll be happy to, if you ask me what it was after the Q&A, I had a vision when I was 14 years old. I woke up and I had a vision of the world. And I wondered if there were other people in the world that had had spontaneous revelatory experiences. So I went down to Winston-Salem and asked that we do a project on visions. So it was called Tongues on Fire, Visions and Ecstasy. And I handed out a questionnaire to thousands of people asking questions, have you ever had a moment when time stood still? Have you ever had a dream that you remember to this day? Have you ever had an experience you can't explain? So I went everywhere. I went to high schools. I went to, I don't know how many slides, I, I went to um, kindergartens, I went to libraries, I think I have a library. No, I don't. Okay, and then here is the spiritual choir of Emmanuel Baptist Church. I'm not sure, I'm going to just say it instead of waiting. Everyone said, oh, you must go to Reverend Mendez's Emmanuel Baptist because the spiritual choir there is very old and they sing in long form, they sing in Gullah style. So when I walked into the church that day, where I had never walked into that church before, I walked into the sound of the spiritual choir singing, I heard a voice. And I felt as if I were a deer all of a sudden in a beam of sunlight. I was just transfixed by the sound of this old elderly choir moving through my body. And they were saying, ma'am, would you like to sit down? And I said, oh, yes, yes. And um, they told me later that this is what the spiritual choir is supposed to do. It's supposed to start a flame rising up in the congregation. And I spoke to some scientist friends of mine in New York, and one guy said, you know, if you take one little piece of heart muscle from one animal, and you take another piece from a different one, and you put them both in the same Petri dish. After a short time, they'll, they'll actually start beating in time together. And that's what music does. It makes our hearts beat together at the same time. So we also did other outreaches to the community. Here's Belinda and Angie. And we put billboards up on Route 55 in Winston-Salem. Small vision, with the language of the community on the billboards. Small visions change me, change who I am, change who I want to be. I have left my body twice. I began to spin head over heels slowly. This is actually from the curator of education who I worked with. So I adore curators of education. Thank you, Adira, for everything you have done. Um, and this road is the road that traditionally divides, had divided the black from the white sections of town. Um, this is Reverend Mendez, my name is called in darkness I see. And experience left me and I felt weightless. And here we put a billboard inside the museum. And um, this piece says I heard a voice stamped over it over and over and over again. And this refers specifically these oak leaves to the vision that I had when I was a child. 